What is going everyone? So this video is without a doubt the most requested video I've had in the last couple days. So let's just get straight into this. I'm going to take my time so it's not going to be as quick as normal. And if I do forget anything at all, I'm going to put it down in the comments to keep you guys updated. So if you do want to be updated with how to do all the new Sea of Thieves events when it does come out and see some really cool Sea of Thieves content, feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell. It really helps out the channel. With all of that being said though, let's just get straight into it. So starting at the most essential part, and that is if you are looking to do this fort, what you need to do is automatically look to the northeast or the east. If if you do see a regular skull cloud over there, it is likely that you will find that, that fort is active. So there is no specific spawn rate to this one fort. It has the exact same chance of spawning as all the other forts on the map. So if you are going to find yourself server jumping for it, it may take a while. In my case, it took me around five minutes to find a fort that was active over there. But although if you are looking at completing it, my best suggestion would be to server jump, but if you do want to get some stuff done while you wait, just hang around in a fort and complete as many as you can. Eventually, one will spawn there. So when you get to the island, you're going to need to find a perfect spot to park. So for me, I'm going to show on the video here, this is where I always pull up and park. Not only is it protected from all of the cannons, you will find when the volcano goes off that there's so many items around you to work as a shield, so you shouldn't have many issues at all, although keep note it is possible that one of the volcanic rocks can hit your ship. The only massive downside to this spot is that when the volcano does go off, you will find that the water around you will burn, so do be careful of that. So showing in the video here, if you just watch, you'll be able to see where all the spawn locations are, but I'm going to riddle them off to you now. In my experience, there are four different spawning locations for the skeletons, and not all the time will they spawn in the exact same spot, they might split up. It works the same as every other fort, there's nothing new there. So in no particular particular order, I'm going to go straight through them. The first spot that you can find is on the outside of the main gate that is on the bottom of the fort. You'll see that there's a little half semicircle rotund thing. They can spawn there. Following that is in the little cave right in the middle. As well, you can find them on the hill that leads up to the top part of the fort. And the final part that you can see is just on the outside of the top part of the fort. If that does confuse you though, just watch the video. All the spawn locations I run between and all of us run between so you can see it there. It is very important to note though, if you are right at the top and you want to get down to the bottom fairly quickly, what you need to do is jump in that little crystal pool. The things you should note about that though is there's only one spot where you can jump without getting hurt. As you can see in the video, I jump with that sort of sideways action. That is how I always get down safely. And it's also very important to note that the gold skeletons do not rust through that little lake. But on the plus side, if you do find yourself up the top and some gold skeletons spawn, what I suggest you do is just drop a gunpowder barrel down from the top. That will clear most of them, if not all of them, around 90% of the time. Moving on now to the ammo crates. There are two that are really essential, but the one in the video is the one I suggest you go to. It is the most central one of all the locations. So the two places are the one in the video, and if you go to the top of the main fort, you can see it's just on that first level before you jump down into the cave. While you are clearing this fort, you will notice that the ground will tremor. It seems that the fort does tremor more so than it does explode. With that being said though, it is possible for the volcano to go off and really mess up your day. But if you do see the ground shaking, don't worry about it immediately. Just keep an eye on the volcano to see if any smoke is pouring out of the top. The way you can migrate around this little volcano is the same as every other in the Devil's Roar. I do have a full tutorial of that if you do want to check it out, it's just telling you how to work your way through all the volcanoes in the Devil's Roar. You will also notice that geysers will come up and spawn. Most of the time, they do help you out more than they hinder your experience. If you do find yourself in a dangerous spot, though, what you can do is walk on some of the scaffolding where all the wood is. You cannot get hit by a geyser there. Now, a really important thing to note is although the fort is massive, it does work to your advantage. You will find if a mob of skeletons spawn with some gunpowder barrel, you can use that to your advantage and maybe even use the geysers if you need to. What you can do is run them around a wide train and get them to group up. The best spot to get all the skeletons to group up in my experience is a little walkway between the vault and the entrance to the main part of the island. That whole long section there is really great to let them up and it is a good spot to use those gunpowder barrels to your advantage. What I suggest you do is treat this entire fort like a Devil's Raw Order of Souls mission. Go in with the same amount of caution you have, although I don't find it to be really essential to use your ship cannons to take out the waves because most of the time they are fairly easy. So now addressing how you're going to go about this island if it does erupt with the crews. To start with, I'm going to talk about solo and work my way up. So if you are solo, it is always essential that you're going to need to bring a rowboat. What you should do is row your your rowboat into the fort then leave your ship behind the rocks that aren't too far away that way if you do die you can just shoot yourself back with a cannon and the way you get back is with all the loot on the rowboat moving on now to if you are working with two people what you do if the volcano does start to erupt have one person stay on the island and clear the waves hide in the cave to dodge the rocks though then have the second person take your ship away so it doesn't get damaged give it around five or ten minutes that volcano will stop and you can go back to doing your normal thing and with a brig and a galleon it is the exact same process keep three people if you're on a galleon to the fort and have one person take the ship away. Of course, you'll need to keep the anchor up if you're on a galleon though, so it is easy to escape. 
With a brig though, same sort of process. You don't have to keep your anchor up because it's not too hard to raise your anchor with one person. So keep two people on the fort, then one person on the ship ready to go. Moving on now to keeping your ship safe from others. There's only three ways that you can find other ships coming towards you. There's mainly only two, but there is three. The main two ways that you will find ships coming for you is from the south and the west. It is very unlikely that you will see someone coming from the east side because that is the edge of the map and same as the north because there's not much room to play with there. If you do occasionally run to right at the top of the fort, you can see everywhere unless there is some fog. Fog is a little bit dangerous in this situation, but it's not too hard. So moving on to one of the final parts of this guide is the loot. So it is very important to note that at the time of this video, you do not get any special type of chest or special type of mega keg. They do stay the same as all of the other forts. The only thing that is ashen are all the other pieces. So by that, I mean the merchant stuff doesn't come out with tea now. It comes with volcanic rocks and all the chests, they are ashen chests as well as the skulls and the trinkets. They are all ashen. So most of the time you will find you'll get normal the amount of loot, but it will double in price. So when you sell, it will be for a little bit more, but whether or not it is really worth the challenge if you don't feel too confident about it, I do not know. Personally though, if you do enjoy forts and you feel very confident, always recommend going for this fort over any other, because it is so cool to work with and it is my favorite part on the entire world now. So that's pretty much been the most of what you need to know. If there's anything that I've missed out or anything changes at all, I'll always put it down in the comments and keep you guys updated. With that being said though, if there's a massive rework with this entire fort, I will make a new video addressing that, so do be on the lookout for that. So if you do want to support the channel, what I suggest you do is go down and hit that subscribe bell. Also, sharing this with your friends will help as well. That really is a good way to grow this channel and help expand to a wider audience. Not only that though, if you do want to directly support what I do on this channel, feel free to hit that little join button. For a small fee monthly, you'll be able to get some really cool perks. But as I always say, if you don't want to, there is no pressure to need to do that. Also, it's important to note that if you do need some people to do this with, please go down to the Discord. That'll be the top link in the description. There, there's over 3,000 members in there. So if you want to find some really cool people to play with and you want a chance to play with myself or some of the other admins, please go there and use that because I actively find people in the Looking for Crew Chats there. And wrapping up to the end of the self-promotion because I know you guys really don't want to hear it. If you want to find some cool little challenges I'm going to be running soon with this fort, please go down to my Instagram. That is linked below and is also at the end video you'll see in the bottom left hand side of the screen so do check that out if you are interested so all, all that being said though that's been the entire video thank you guys for watching it means the world to me and i'll see you all in the next video Listen.